Okay, so good afternoon once again, everybody. Um, uh, at this point, I think we're going to get started. Uh, so welcome to Bluebeam 2018 Tips and Tricks to Work More Efficiently. My name is Mark Damaris, and I am the Regional Project Manager. I have expert knowledge in assisting organizations with the implementation of building information modeling technologies and the processes in their design workflows. I also work closely with Microdesk's sales and consulting team to ensure that we are delivering the most beneficial and effective implementation solutions to our clients. This involves providing technical support, training, product evaluations, recommendations, on-site services, and standards and development. I have experience in many of today's leading BIM technologies, including Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, and BIM 360, as well as Bluebeam Review. If you're not familiar with Microdesk, we're an AECO consulting firm. We've been around since 1994. We have 13 locations total, 12 in the United States, and one in London. Our technical team consists of over 180 people with various backgrounds in the industry. Every consultant and developer on our team specializes in the software and workflows relevant to the industry. Each comes from a real working background and has experience we serve, and we know how things are done in the field. In addition to webinars like the one you're attending today, we also provide full service consulting and training. This includes building information modeling services where we can work with staff and we can create content and review content for you so we can come into your office and help you and assist with your projects. We also cover enterprise strategy and workflow assessments where we can help you do things just a little bit more efficient and effectively. Technology management, mentoring and support to help you in areas where we can train on hardware, software and workflow. We also have an application and assist with code when needed. So our agenda for today um, is, is this. We've tried to uh, select a few tips and tricks uh, for efficiency from a variety of different areas within the software. Um, so things like viewing, document management, editing, and administration. The time for the actual content delivery of the webinar is roughly 30 minutes or so. Um, and uh, let's get started. going to open up Bluebeam. Okay. So this is the the Bluebeam 2018 user interface revamped uh, from 2017. Uh, they've made it a little bit more minimalistic. Um, when you see it out of the box, it probably would look something more like this, where you have very few icons, um, some on the sides, uh, but basically very, very, very minimal. The, the concept of the new user interface was to allow you to have maximizing tools like profiles uh, are, are one of the means and methods that they have put in place to help you with that. Now, profiles have been around in all of the previous versions of review, uh, but in review 2018, you can really harness these profiles and have them set up in such a way that, that you're going to be working on. So if you're doing, say, flooring takeoff, you could have a profile, like a flooring takeoff profile, which would then open tool chests and markups lists that would encompass all of the tools required for the task you're working on. For daily tasks, if you have a series of different tools that you like to use, I also have a custom profile that I've created here uh, just for my own personal use, which has the tools that I use most often. I've set this profile up 
to look very similar to the previous versions of review where I have file access, thumbnails, bookmarks, places, and so on on the left-hand side like they were at the top of the menu in review 17 and previous versions. Properties, measurements, and so on. Studio, and then the workspace at the bottom. So I'm going to select a, a new PDF for just a minute and um, open up our new PDF just so we can activate some of these tools here. And um, so uh, let's see. So file access category. Um, so one of the things that a lot of people for efficiency don't harness is the power of the file access tool. As a way to be more efficient, uh, you can see that down here, this is a list of all of the recent files that I've opened. By clicking on the calendar here, you can sort this by date. You can sort it by folders that you've accessed, figure out which ones you've accessed the most. And then you can also see by access, you can set it by access history. So if I were to select access history, it has all of the a week ago and so on. So similar to, uh, you know, how you might like organize your email, um, just the ones that you've accessed most recently. At the top, you can actually pin these items to specific categories. So let's say I access this file all the time. By using the push pin over here, I can assign it to a specific category like the ones that I have already, like 3D PDF, or a combined set, or compare documents, or even one from my web demonstration, or I could create an entirely new category. By selecting new category, a window will pop up and I can assign that to a specific category, like say structural drawings. By clicking OK, you'll see that now that S0.1 sheet has been added to structural drawings. You can then have these saved all the time, maybe for the duration of a project you're working on, or if they're files that you just typically access most often. As you open a series of drawings in review, you'll see that tabs have populated at the top. This isn't something that's unique to review. This is, you know, web browsers and things like that. But there's a lot of power that you can have with these tabs at the top. For example, you can pull a tab off and create a new window. You can select other PDFs and attach it to that tab. So if you're working in an office that has multiple monitor environment, you can take these windows, place it on your second monitor, third monitor, whatever you use, so you can have multiple files open at the same time. When you're done with the extra window, you can click and drag to bring it back, or you can right-click on the tab and send it back to the original host window. If you have so many files open that you've exceeded your real estate at the top of your drawing window, you can hit the drop-down arrow at the end here, and this will give you a list of all of the windows that you currently, all the tabs that you currently have open, and you can navigate to the on the tab. Anytime you see a document that has an asterisk at the end, that means that there is something in that file that has not yet been saved. So that means not be saved at all. If I were on a window that I want to keep open and I want to close all these right clicking on that tab you can see that it can close all other tabs. Now, because that file was not saved, I've now been prompted. In this case, it's a blank document, so I'll just hit don't save. And you'll notice that it has now reduced all of the tabs. If, if screen real estate is something that you need a lot of, uh, down at the bottom here, we have our navigation toolbar. By pressing F4 on your keyboard, you can turn that on and turn that off just to gain a little bit of real estate. 
Likewise, lots of users like to have their rulers um, on the screen by pressing Control R on the keyboard. You can actually bring up the rulers so you can see where you live uh, in relation to the edges of the document and whatnot. So zero to 42 inches, um, and you have your rulers there. So that's Control R on the keyboard. We'll open those rulers if you like that. Creating customized markups is another great way to work more efficiently and to capture some extra data. Bottom here, we have some markups that are in our list. We can go to the markups tab, go to columns. You'll see that we have check boxes or check marks next to all of the columns that are visually uh, seen at the bottom here. By hitting manage columns, I can come in and I can turn If I'd like to add a custom column, I can click on custom column, add, give my column a name. So let's say we want it to be uh, project manager approved. I can select the type of column that it would be. Things like check marks, choice, which is basically a drop down menu, a date field, a formula similar to you would use in Excel, numbers, or text. Let's just make it a check mark. When I select check mark, it gives me an option as to what I want its default state to be, either checked or unchecked. And I'm just going to select unchecked. I'm going to click OK. You'll see that it's now in my list of custom columns. And when I hit OK again, you'll see that it has now added that to my markups list. To the left, I have all of the different markups that are in this drawing. If I select one of those markups and I want to approve it, I just place a check mark next to the column in the column that I just created. Custom columns can be used, say the results. So say I want to filter by project manager approved, and I only want to see the, the markups that I have approved. By selecting the checked field, you'll see that it has now limited it to just in the document. It highlights, or it was highlighted, but it keeps it highlighted when it's been approved. So by selecting on the other markup here, you'll see that it's highlighted. If I were to reverse the filter and say only show me the ones that have not been approved, you'll notice that it removes the highlighter and has grayed out that markup, and it has highlighted all the rest. This is a quick and easy way to identify markups. Moving along, let's talk a little bit about document management. I'm going to close this file out, and I'm going to open up a set of drawings that I have here. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to remove all these labels. So oftentimes, you're going to you'll receive documents and um, your, your documents come in and your pages are just labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And those labels don't necessarily help you identify where you are within your drawing set. So within Bluebeam Review, as a way to work more efficiently, labels that clearly identify the sheet that you're working on uh, is a quick and easy way to do that. By clicking on Create New Page Labels, I'm going to zoom in to the bottom here. I'm going to collect a page region where my page number would be. I'm going to add a delimiter. So I'll say space dash space. I'm going to add a second region, in this case, the drawing title. And I'll create a window around that. And you'll now see in the preview here that it says A2. When I click OK, I then have the option to apply that to all pages within the document. By clicking OK, it's going to go through the entire document. And I now have page labels that clearly are represented by their actual page. 
Another great tool for working more, efficiency, more efficiently is to create hyperlinks throughout the document. By going to batch, link, new, use my open file, click next. I can again select a page region within the document. In this case, I want the page number. Click OK. I will then click on Generate Entire Document for location, the location on each one of the sheets. And I now have all of my hyperlinks created. So I'm now going to say Run. And it's going to search through the document for every instance where that particular phrase, like A100, occurred. So I have a little summary that's come back. It says 128 hyperlinks were created and 128 hyperlinks were deleted. The hyperlinks already existed in the project, so it's still found the same 128 instances of that information. When I hit Finish and Close, I can come in here and you'll see that by clicking on any one of these, like A202, it will automatically bring me to the A202 sheet. On my view tab down here at the bottom, by using the left arrow, I can return to my previous view. So very similar to working in, like, say, Revit. If I return to a plan view, and you'll see that it has also identified those in that pieces of information within my markers as well. So if I want to go to the elevation of this building, I can click on A300 and it brings me to the proper sheet. So similar to thumbnails are bookmarks. So I'm just going to clear all of these bookmarks out. And bookmarks can be created in such a way that you can actually just say create bookmarks and you can create them by page labels. So we've already created all the labels at the thumbnail level, and I can then go through the entire document and I can create a bookmark for each one of those page labels. So this works very similar in that I can just go through my list of bookmarks and will bring me to that page. You can create links within your document as well. So if we were to say be on uh, our A500 sheet, Sorry, bookmarks. Let's go to the A500 sheet. Doesn't want to go. There we go. So if we're on our A500 sheet here, we can create links. By hitting the add a place, I can come in and I can assign a place name, like say view six on A500. So I'll say 6 slash A500, enlarged plan. And then I'm going to say get a rectangle. And I'm going to select that rectangle right there. And I can hit OK. So now I can not only have uh, a link to the entire document, say here, where I go to A500, and it shows you the whole sheet, I can also go directly to a specific location, like the A600. You can add child bookmarks. So add a child bookmark, which could represent that A600. Um, Sorry, six on A500. And then by right clicking on that, I can add an action that would basically bring me directly to that view and click OK. So now I have A500 as a whole, and then I can have a direct bookmark to that location. Now one of the nice features that Bookmarks allows you to do as well is by coming up to the Bookmarks tab at the top, I can select the drop down, I can select Export Bookmarks from the current document. I'm going to do it as an index so it comes down like this. And then I can include it in a PDF format or a CSV format. 
which basically if I had a CSV format, I could take my entire bookmarks list, send it directly into Excel. It's a great way to uh, compare the documents in your drawing set, what's in the PDF versus uh, what you're supposed to have. For now, I'm just going to create it as a PDF. I'm going to save it in the source file location, which basically means it's going to put it in the same folder that my, my drawing came from. It's going to give it the same drawing name, but it's going to give it a little suffix at the end. So in this case, it's going to say bookmarks. If it already exists in there, I can have it set to overwrite the existing file. And when I hit save, you'll see that it has now generated a bookmark summary of all of the bookmarks that were in this drawing. And so when I come in to this document, I can click on any one, like say 301, and click, and it will go back to the original document and open that sheet. So batch hyperlinking that we did at the beginning um, is a great feature, but it's a feature that's only available in Bluebeam Review. When you have a bookmark summary, you can still have these links automatically created to the specific pages. You can create a file attachment as well. So if you were to have to send this out to a client or to a consultant, you can actually attach inside of the document that hyperlink file. So by double clicking there, you'll see that it opens marks. Likewise, you can also attach things like JPEGs. So I've got a curtain wall axon view here and it will open it up in whatever your default viewer application is for JPEGs. To attach files like this, it's actually F key on your keyboard, and you can actually attach any type of file you want and put it inside the container. That includes AutoCAD files, Revit files, whatever you want to include in here, you can. So in this particular case, if I wanted to just go to my desktop and I wanted to go to my webinar folder here, I can grab anything that I want and I can then add that into it. So I'll just grab a different image here um, and hit open and then I place it in the sheet. Now you'll notice that the icon for the new image is actually a lot smaller and different than these. By selecting the file that I just attached, I can come up to the properties bar here and I can pick the type of icon that will be associated with this file attachment. I like using the file image itself because it will actually change. So here's an image versus a PDF and AutoCAD would have its own and so on. By clicking on show file name, you'll see that you can actually have the file name associated with it as well. And I've now placed it like four times. But these images are now embedded into this PDF. And if I were to send this PDF to a client, I don't have to send them all three of these documents. They would actually be here, and all they would have to do is double click on it, and they'd have access to it. The last feature that I want to talk about when it comes to document management uh, is the search tool. So if I want to go to my floor plan again, so you can always search for text, uh, especially when it comes out of uh, vector-based applications like AutoCAD or uh, Revit or Microsoft Word. You can search for text. But one of the great features inside of Bluebeam is it also has what they call a visual search. And visual search will allow me to select an object in my... So in the case here, let's say I wanted to find out how many water closets I have in my document. I can select draw a box around the water closet. I can then play with some of the options that I have here in, uh, in the palette uh, on the side. So I can say search for different rotations, only show me ones that are of the same color, uh, search markups that might look like that. Uh, you can search for the most fine detail. Uh, you can play with the sensitivity of how much detail it's actually looking for. You can select here at the top, do you want to do the current document, do you want to do the current page, all documents, or search an entire folder. So I'm going to just say for the sake of this demo that I only want to search this page. And when I hit search, down here at the bottom it's going to generate the results. 
So you can see that I have, we're at 53, 70, and 100. And so here are all of the water closets that it found. Even though we have some markups that have gone through the water closets, uh, it has still identified them. So say I'm doing an estimate uh, and I need to know how many of these water closets I need to purchase. I can use the Select All tool, click on uh, the little uh, lightning bolt here, and now items, uh, or I can just say Apply Account Tool. So when I say Apply Account Tool, um, the window's popping up off the, uh, off the screen here, but I can apply, say, a check mark, and it has now applied a check mark to all of the water closets that are in this view. When I bring up my markups menu at the bottom, you'll see that I now have a count measurement on A201 construction plan level one, six. So I could then uh, use that to quickly come up with estimates for certain items. Okay. So let's go ahead and use uh, one of our tools here already. We're gonna right click and we're gonna say close all the other tabs. I'm going to close some of my menus, return back to our file axis, and I'm gonna open up this floor plan here that has some markups. So some of these markups um, are you know, a little bit messy. You can see that I have uh, a lot of extra space under some of this text, a lot of extra space under text here. Um, by selecting in any one of these text boxes, you can certainly come in and resize the text box to fit nice and clean within your drawing. You can also right click and you'll see that it says to auto size the text box. But if you needed to clean up the entire document to make all of this text as tight as possible, one of the things that you can do is you can actually use your markups list at the bottom by selecting one line item here and hitting Control A on your keyboard for selecting all. And then I can hit Control Alt Z and it will actually resize all of the Control A and Control Alt Z. There we go and it has now resized all of my text boxes to be as tight as possible. When you're doing markups, as a way to work more efficiently, sometimes working with the, the, full, um, the full outright view of the PDF can be a little bit cumbersome. In this particular case, these markups here are really bright and easily identifiable, but sometimes that's not always the case. In the uh, view tool here, on the view um, menu, you can go to the bottom and you can actually use this dim content tool. You select the percentage you want to dim it and you'll see that it has dimmed the content of the original PDF. This is a way that you can actually clearly identify where the, the original uh, file information was coming from. When you create your general markups and you place it in the view, the markups by default will, will just, you know, they'll come in at whatever these default settings are. But if your office has a specific standard on how it likes to see its markups, if you go to the tool chest and you have that tool already saved, like say an architect's markup here or a contractor's markup here, if you right click on that tool, you can see that it has what they call a paint formatter. Paint formatter will allow you to then come in and select markups of all different types to match the markup that you have here. Way to make sure that people are com conforming to the standards that you've set. On the in layers, you can actually set layers so that all markups will go to a particular layer. So I'm going to go to my layers tool. I'm going to say add a new layer. Uh, we'll just put it at the end and we're going to call this my layer. And 
and hit OK. I can then right click on that and I can define it by right clicking on it I can define this as a markups layer and it says little warning here that going forward all markups that you create were going to this layer will be going to this layer so this is now my markups layer and it puts a little icon next to it so you know which one it is so if I now use that same cloud tool I originally used and I place the cloud tool in the document and I come down to my markups list and select that you'll see that it is now on the default markups layer you can also set specific layers for specific tools so maybe you don't want just one default layer that collects all of your markups but maybe each one of your markups you want on its own unique layer by right clicking on the tool chest and the tool in the tool chest you can then assign the layer that this is going to go to so right now this tool is assigned to layer architects markups I can assign it to a different layer if I wanted to because I just clicked on it but when I use that tool and I place that tool in the drawing you'll see that that one automatically goes to the tool uh, to the layer that that tool has been assigned so again this is another quick and easy way to start organizing your drawings and your markups when I now go to my layers I can now turn on and turn off which layers I want to see so if I don't want to see default markups and I only want to see architectural markups I could do that if I want to turn off the architectural I can do that I can also set layers to print or not print another tool that uh, that is pretty handy is the notes tool so notes tool will allow you to put a little icon in the drawing and you can type in a, a selection of a lot of notes you know that maybe would be too cumbersome to fit on the drawing um, and then you can minimize that note let's see should be able to minimize that note it's not playing nice just close it okay so now that note exists in the drawing and anytime I click on that icon it's going to reopen the note but what it doesn't show me in that note is who actually created the note. In your review preferences, you can go in and you can go to your markups. Uh, sorry, I believe it's document. Oh. Tools. On the tools menu, under markups, you can say show the author and the date in the pop-up. And you can also determine whether or not those pop-ups will print. And you can control the opacity that the pop-up will show up. So if I say that I want to know who the author and the date was of the pop-up, now when I click on that note, you'll see that my username, the date, and the time that that note was placed in the drawing appears at the top of the note. Similar to when we did the file attachment, you can also change the icon that that note has. So if it's just a general comment, maybe instead of having that little sticky note tab, maybe it's a little comment tab. So now you can change the icon. You can also change the color that the note would appear. So maybe you like pink sticky notes. You can do that. You can also create a master legend. So similar to the way that we created our markups list um, or we we size our markups properly we can use our markups list to generate a master legend so I'm going to select the entire uh, markups list here I'm going to right click and I'm going to say create a new legend and then it asks me to place that legend in the drawing that legend now has all of the different markups that are in this drawing markup you may have to go in and change some of the properties by selecting on your properties palette you can include in here a title you can change font sizes you can edit which columns are visible and not visible within the legend so let's just start um, clicking here and we're going to add a ton of of columns to our legend and hit OK and you'll see 
that I've now got all of the information about these different markups that I've placed in there. You can also, if, it, if it's a multiple page doc, this one page, uh, it looks like because I only have one page here that it's not coming up as a, as a choice, but you can have it include all pages within a document. The snapshot tool is another great tool that you can use by using the snapshot tool, which I have on my keep on my uh, toolbar here. I believe it is also located under edit snapshot or it's G on your keyboard as a shortcut. You can take snapshots and paste those snapshots in your document. So we're just going to say snapshot select and then it's not grabbing it try that again snapshot and then control V from your keyboard should paste it um, having a little bit of trouble here not sure why that's not working but you can see that I had done it the the snapshot is located here you can also use uh, spaces. So if you're not familiar with spaces, where you can, you can create locations within your document. Let's see, close out of this. Select objects. I'm gonna close my document for just a second. And we're going to reopen it. Looks like I've kind of lost control of it. If I select my space, just do it from the, uh, the spaces list here. Um, spaces. If I select my space here, I can right click and create a snapshot based specifically on the space tool. And then using the control V can then place that space on a document. I also uh, found a way that, uh, it's a pretty neat little feature that I like to use. Um, if you use the snapshot tool and you capture a, a small little area, say up here where it's all white, and selecting the properties of that tool, what we can do, let's see here, let's go back to our properties. This is uh, starting to become problematic here. Try this one more time. Snapshot. And then I want the properties of the snapshot. I'm not getting my actual properties menu. Let's just grab it from down here maybe. Snapshot. There we go. And I can change the fill color of the snapshot to say, uh, that's not the right one. <laughs> Try this again. Snapshot. Paste the snapshot. There we go. Fill color. Yellow. And now I'm going to change its blending mode from normal to screen. And you'll notice that it disappears. And say, add to my tool chest. And I'm just going to add it to my tools. I'm going to come back to my tool chest, right click, add to tools, my tools. So now I have this, this box and it doesn't really do anything, but one of the things that it will do is I can place it in a document and I can actually use it to highlight just specific areas by using the blend mode. So if I just want to highlight a certain item, um, you can do that. And so it's wherever you place it, it's door you'll see that I can now highlight the door. If I turn the dimming portion off, let's we'll go back to 100%, you can see that it really helps that door stand out and it's a way that you can then identify quickly certain objects. And I would change the subject from snapshot to say, um, you know, door. 
So that's just a couple of quick tips and tricks um, for different um, ways that you can uh, manipulate. One last, uh, so, so we did some document management, we did some markups. Um, so we've talked a lot about keyboard shortcuts and one of the new features that Bluebeam Review now has uh, is it's now giving you the ability to customize shortcuts. And if you go to the review menu, right below profiles, you'll see that they have a keyboard shortcuts option. And you can now go through keyboard shortcuts and change them to something that you would prefer them to be. So you can do it either by command or by cloud and the cloud plus tool earlier. So if I were to type in cloud, cloud, try it here, cloud, there we go. So I've got my cloud and my cloud plus tool. So cloud is set to K, cloud plus is set to C. If I wanted to say reverse that, I could come into my cloud plus tool. I can select the shortcut and say, let's make that K. I get a warning at the bottom that says that that's currently assigned to cloud. I'm going to click on reassign plus tool. I can then go up to cloud and say, let's make that C and hit add. And I, if you're not familiar with the shortcuts on the help menu, you can come to the bottom here and you'll see there's a keyboard shortcuts guide. And when you open that, let's go to the top for a minute. This will actually give you all of the default keyboard shortcuts as they ship with Bluebeam Review. You can print this out, put it on the side of your desk, have it, and then you'll know what all of the keyboard shortcuts are uh, for certain tasks. It's broken down by markups, measurements, forms, um, what have you. When you customize your keyboard shortcuts, just so you know too, is that you'll see that when I hover over the tools on my toolbar, it actually tells me what the new keyboard shortcut is. So I turn the cloud plus tool to K from C, and it now tells me in parentheses that it's now K, and this tells me that it's now C. So it's taken those keyboard shortcuts that I've customized, and it's applied it to, to the actual toolbar uh, help tip as well. As they're, they're constantly looking to improve their software, Bluebeam uh, has been really good with listening to their users. So if you have a, a suggestion for a new tool that doesn't currently exist in the software, on that help menu, you can go to this tab here where it says make a suggestion, which will open up a web form where you can then put in what version of their software you're using. So in this case, we're using review. And then it gives you a little field here where you can put in what it is you're looking to add. So a suggested category um, or whatever. So different features. They're, uh, you know, all of the features that they currently, you know, add each year have been primarily from user type of information from you to help improve the software to work better for you. Another, uh, another feature that review has uh, on a kind of administration type level is review has the ability to maintain revisions within the software. So if I go to my preferences, I go to general and I go to document, you'll see that it has save mode. And by default, the save mode for your documents are published without revisions. But if I were to say maintain revisions and hit OK, when I save this going forward, let's see if it's going to let me here, save it. Looks like we've locked up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like it's locked up. I'm gonna close review out, try and open it again. Let's 
let's just open this one. Uh, okay, so this is the first document we were working on. We're going to go to uh, revert. So this one here was one that I had been working on earlier. Uh, I did have my save revisions on, but you'll see that I have a revision one and a revision two. And each time I save this document, that list will get longer. So I can say revert back to revision one. And it would then keep track of the changes. So it's going to actually let me save it as revision one. And then I can flip flop back and forth between them. So I have combined set revision one. Um, and then my regular combined set. And then I can keep going back and forth. So it's saving the different files. That concludes the, the, the presentations. Jump back into um, PowerPoint here. And so yeah, so at this time, um, if we have any questions that have been submitted in, I'm going to take a look at the, at the uh, webinar, see if any questions have come in. So um, the, the, one of the first questions that came in here was is so for that is that this is uh, Bluebeam 2018. We were actually hoping to do this presentation today in 2019, but it looks like review has not uh, released the tw uh, Bluebeam has not released uh, review 2019 yet. Um, oh. I didn't see this coming in. I didn't realize that the audio was dropping out. I do apologize for that. Um, the the batch link feature, I believe, is available only in Review Extreme. Uh, it does change year to year, so I'd have to I'd have to check into that for sure. But I'm pretty sure that the batch link is is a Review Extreme feature only. So uh, someone also was asking the, uh, about Bluebeam locking up and locking out so often. Um, I haven't really noticed that to be a case like in real working environments. I think that with the webinar kind of running live and things like that, I think that it uh, some of those tasks may have just been a little bit too much to to do. So I, I wouldn't be overly concerned about uh, Bluebeam locking up too much. I haven't really experienced that uh, as a user. And um, what happens when Bluebeam PDFs are sent to non-Bluebeam users? Uh, that's a, a great question. So Bluebeam uh, review has been designed to work with the ISO, uh, so the industry standard for PDF containers. So regardless of what software you're sending it to, uh, like say Acrobat, if you're sending uh, a PDF that you've edited in Bluebeam to Acrobat, uh, it will still open and operate uh, at exactly the way you saw it before you sent it. That being said, uh, the markups, you know, you can't necessarily edit the markups and things like that, but they'll be there and visually accurate to the way you sent them. A couple of questions Came, came in too about uh, creating electrical looking symbols. Uh, on Bluebeam's website, they actually do have um, some tool chests that you can download that actually have a lot of those standard symbols uh, already available for you to download. Uh, and I would definitely suggest going there. Um, I will, if, if you want to send an email to the, uh, to the webinar, we can try and find the, uh, I can try and send the link out to you. Um, I think that seems to be what we've got here. Um, 
one, one other one had come in here. It says, with several types of PDF applications, what's the best way for creating the PDF file? So if you're a Bluebeam review user, uh, a lot of the, the, you know, the uh, applications that we use day to day uh, will have a plugin available. So Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, all have uh, a Bluebeam export add-in. Uh, it also creates a print driver for creating it. Uh, I have noticed in, in using the software that their plugin that they have created for the different applications tend to have a lot of extra features that aren't necessarily available if you just use the print driver. Uh, so I usually like to encourage people to, especially if you're like, say, a Revit user, um, to, to definitely look at the plugin and see what that plugin will offer you because there, there will definitely be additional options beyond uh, beyond what you get with just the printer. So, all right, so it, it's been a pleasure presenting to you today. Um, and I hope you found the tips and tricks useful. Uh, and I hope that they increase your efficiency when working with Bluebeam. If you have any other questions and you'd like to learn more about some of the things for solutions, visit our website or give us a call, send an email or reach out to us um, via one of our media platforms. All right. Thank you.